everyone sing with us. God will take care of you.
I first became acquainted with Pat many years ago at the Greens Church of God, but really got to know her as I fellowship at the Iron Pillar Ministry under the leadership of Pat herself and her husband, Pastor Steve. I always knew Pat to be very quiet and unassuming. She was strong and steadfast in her faith. She really loved the Lord and it was a joy to see her express that love as she worshipped. Years ago, Pat preached a message. I never understood why it remained so vivid to me. But whenever I came across the scripture she used, I would always remember her and that it was a scripture she preached on. I can't tell you exactly what she said. But the scripture itself gives you an idea. It was a scripture from Philippians chapter 4. Where Paul said he learned to be content. Whatever the circumstance. He said he knew what it was to be in need. And what it was to have plenty. He learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. For me, from my observation, that is who Pat was. She was a contented lady. Deep within Pat's reserved personality, was a genuine capacity to console without saying a single word. I have seen on many occasions and experienced for myself how quickly Pat sprang into action if she got the slightest bit of inclination that you were about to cry. Many times or should I say every time at the altar Pat was there to catch that very first tear before it left your cheek. She would sneak tissue into your hand as she placed her hand on your shoulder and gently pat you without a single spoken word. But as if with each pat, she was lovingly saying, it is going to be all right. Her presence, her gesture, her pattern, and her silence was very comforting. We will miss having her around, but her memories will live on. May she rest in peace and rise in glory. Pat, we know it's going to be all right. Good day. Proverbs 31 asks a question. Who can find a virtuous woman? Her, her price is far above rubies. Without reservation or hesitation, I can classify Patricia as a virtuous woman. Patricia gave her life to Jesus Christ as a young lady at the soldiers church of God. Her faithfulness to God was evident by the life she lived 
their assault as church of God and continuing for the last 34 years as a beautiful and precious and supportive wife of our dear pastor Steve Moore. She gave human service working in the ministry with him, being supportive in the many storms across his boat. She was resolute on the foundation that Jesus Christ was the Son of God and Lord of her life, redeeming her through his precious blood and sealing her with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. She was a person that took great effort to ensure that things were done to the highest standard. In her efforts at her church, she accepted nothing but the best. Patricia, reserve, but yet highly noticeable. Humble, yet she exuded a nobility and a confidence. She was quiet, yet speaking with firm authority. Never one to put on show or ears, neither was she one to be trifled with. Patricia was a trustworthy, sincere and dependable person. And I've known her practically her whole life and I found her to be one that sets an example of a virtuous woman. Her life has been a blessing to many. She will be surely missed. But we rejoice in the fact that Patricia is now with her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And until we meet again, we will rest her in the arms of Jesus and we pray God's divine blessing on all of you. God bless you. Patricia Montley Moore, my friend. I met Pat when we were both teenagers attending the Church of God Youth Fellowship Camp. She a member of Salter's Church of God and I, Orange Hill Church of God. This was an unbroken friendship. Even though there were some years when we didn't see each other often, but in 2012, when not only being sisters in Christ, we became church sisters, the friendship grew stronger. Our friendship continued up to her death. I want to honor her memory by singing what was her favorite song. Dead to every Wordly pleasure, dead in a deed to sin am I, but alive to Christ my Savior, daily to Him I'm a joy. Let me strive not for the riches of this earth that soon decay. 
from the world of turn to Jesus and his more abundant way. Let me see Jesus only, Jesus only, Jesus only. Let me see Jesus only, only he can satisfy. Storms and fury bitter only tempest of my heart will sail oh but my pilot's name is Jesus he will calm the wildest gale let me see Jesus only Jesus only Jesus only let me see Jesus only only he can satisfy when I face death's chilly river when upon its brink I stand oh, I shall fearless be if Jesus only heeds me gently by the hand oh then I'll see Jesus only, Jesus only, Jesus only, then I'll see Jesus only, because only he can Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Good morning. We have the sentences. Jesus says, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, 
nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and live again that he might be Lord of both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world, and we will take nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. We will now have the eulogy by Rhea Motley, and this will be followed by a tribute. Good morning. Eloise Patricia Moore, known by many as Patricia Moore, was the first daughter born to the late Joseph Nathaniel Motley and Clotha Motley of Salter St. George. Patricia's other siblings consist of her brother Michael and sisters Brenda, Sherlon, and her other two deceased sisters, Hazel and Rosalind. Patricia attended the St. George Girls School and later went on to the Modern High School and Macon Business Studies School. She worked at Solar Dynamics for a short while in her career before going on to Manu Life Insurance Company which was then taken over by Life of Barbados Limited and subsequently Sagicar Life Inc., where she worked until her death on 31st of January, 2021. She married Steve Moore, the love of her life, in 1986, and their union lasted 34 years. As many of us knew, as many, as many of us that knew Patricia well, knew that she was quiet in nature, not outgoing, but she loved to be home. She enjoyed the love of her husband, the togetherness of, of her family, and the fellowship with her brothers and sisters in the Lord at Iron Pillar Ministries, where she served with her husband, who is the pastor. Patricia loved her work at Sajikar and was dedicated to Sajikar Life Inc., rising early to begin her duties and to fulfill all her duties there. Patricia was loved and respected by all her colleagues. She was very trustworthy and she served with humility. Patricia's other love of her life was her mother, whom she cherished dearly. She would always refer to her, to her as my mommy. A mommy's girl she was, as her mother Oreo was dear to her. She loved her, talked about her, cared for her, and demonstrated tangibly her love for her in many ways. She loved her younger sister, Sherlon. She saw her not only as a sister, but as her own daughter, as it were, as she raised Sherlon from a baby. They bonded, and Patricia loved Sherlon as her own soul, as David loved Jonathan. Michael and Brenda were also loved as well, and there was nothing that she would not do for them. As I said, family was truly Patricia's life. A special mention must go to Patricia's latest love and joy, her niece, Kayeja, my daughter. Patricia loved her as her own daughter. I remember the many times she would call me to speak to her, to check in on her, to see how she was doing. She loved spending time with her, and every time we went by Pat's house, the first place my daughter ran to was Patricia's bedroom and shouted, Aunt Pat, Aunt Pat. Patricia was truly there to me. She had a profound impact on my life. As a matter of fact, it is through her that I met my husband, Kerry, and the entire Motley family. Never did I know that plotting her here would lead to entering into such a wonderful and caring family. I will miss her dearly as I loved her from the bottom of my heart. Patricia accepted Christ in her teenage life at the Salter's Church of God and served Christ until her dying day in spirit and in truth with a quiet, gentle, and meek spirit. She was a tower of strength to her family, a suitable helpmeet to her husband, 
and with strength and support to all her siblings. Patricia was not known for many words. She loved Christmas and birthdays, for it was a time to fellowship with all the family, Michael and his wife Colleen, Brenda and her husband Stephen and Kiran, Sherlon and her husband Philip and daughter Kaira, Kerry and his wife myself Rhea, along with, their, with our daughter Kayaja, who as mentioned before, stole Patricia's heart. Patricia was loving, gentle, giving, quiet, soft-spoken, and was not interested in the material things of life, but in the simplicity of life, of caring and helping others from a heart that was true and genuine. Words cannot express the kind of person she was. Her contribution to God and man was great as her life touched so many people. May she rest in peace and rise in glory and hear from her Lord and Savior. Well done, so good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Thank you. Good day. I am Paul Innes, the Executive Vice President and General Manager of Sajikor Life Barbados. And I want to actually share a tribute from the Sajikor family to our dear beloved Pat. The passing of a loved one is something we are never truly prepared for, especially the unexpected passing of family. For the better part of three decades, Pat, as we know her, has been a beloved member of our Sajikor family. And as Genevieve Clark, her most recent supervisor expressed, she was considered much more than a friend by her colleagues. Instead, being viewed as a maternal figure by a number of those who grew close to her over the years here at Sajikor. From the moment she became a member of the Policy Administration Department, which was later renamed as the New Business Department, Pat quickly proved that she was the ultimate example of a team player never hesitating to assist the team wherever possible. In addition to sharing her vast knowledge and experience amassed over the years with all of her colleagues. I must say that I do feel robbed of the opportunity to have gotten to know Pat, having only joined Sajikor April last year. But it is clear from speaking with a number of those who knew her best that her approach to her work was a testament of her dedication to her team and to the company. She was known for her quiet yet assertive personality, along with being committed to ensuring that her immediate team, department and the company as a whole was always doing the best it could to meet the needs of our clients and each other. I know that I speak for the entire Sajikor family when I say that we all wish we could be there today to support you, her immediate family. Through this trying time and to express the love and respect we all feel for Pat. We will keep you in our prayers and we will continue to follow the example that she set for us. I'd like to leave you with words from Don Bissage and the song Flying Free. So life's a song I must sing, a gift of love I must share. And when I see the joy it brings, my spirit soar through the air. Like that bird up in the sky, life has taught me how to fly. For now I know what I can be, and now my heart is flying free. Or pray, Pat, is that you will fly free and rest in peace. favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children Jesus is mine.
Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all our days, that we may live as those who believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We will now have Psalm 46 to be read by Kiron Savory. Hey, good morning. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. The heathen raised, the kingdoms removed. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in thunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. But be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. We have a scripture reading, 1 Corinthians 13, to be read by Steve Moore. This scripture was the favorite scripture of my wife. She loved it with all her heart. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become as songed in brass, or a tinkling symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind, charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. It beareth all things, it believeth all things, it hopeth all things, Endureth all things. Charity 
never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is part in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. God bless. The hymn, Sing the Wondrous Love of Jesus, Sing His Mercy and His Grace. Then we all get to heaven. of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Some words from the 19th chapter of the book of Job, the 25th and 26th verses. I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand upon the earth in the last day. And even after that my body is eaten up by the worm, I believe in my flesh, I will see God. Amen. The book of Job is one of those texts in the Old Testament 
that seeks to deal with one of the greatest challenges that still confronts humanity. The problem of the suffering of the innocent. Job came from a community where he himself believed that there was a cosmic order, that good things happen to good people and bad things happen to bad people. And one can easily discern what is happening. But in this story, the writer takes this character Job, who he describes from the very beginning as a righteous man, a man who got up every morning and prayed for his children and offered sacrifices. A man who saw after the needs of his family. And then Job started experiencing the very things that one would expect one who was not righteous or faithful to experience. And it threw everything upside down in his world. Job could not understand or could not come to grips with the notion of the loving God he had believed in and taught so many about before. And as the story unfolds, his wife tells him, you know you must have done something wrong. Curse God and die if you're not going to admit it. His three friends, Zophar, Eliphaz, and Bildad turn up and they tell him, Job, you know you taught this thing all your life. You know that what is happening to you is because you've been unrighteous. But Job knew he didn't change anything in his life. He had not altered anything about the way he had operated. And so at the end in chapter 19, he says, when I look around me, all my friends have deserted me. Even in my house, my servant does not even answer when I call. My wife loathes me. My children have no respect for me. But he still held firm to his faith. He said, look, I do not know what is happening to me, but I know that my Redeemer lives. Amen. And my case will be tried at some point, and I will be vindicated. Job held firm to his faith in God. But what the story also points out, that being righteous in this world does not mean that we're exempt from the vicissitudes of life in this world. That we're still subject to the changes and chances of nature. And today we have gathered here to reflect upon the life of our sister Eloise. One who, like Job, was a woman of faith, but also a human being who lived in this world, subject to the uncertainties of life in this world. But thanks be to God, that through all that she would have experienced, like Job, she never gave up on her faith in God. And whereas as the story of Job continues and he was restored in this life, we know as a Christian people that this life does not write the final chapter for us. That even after we've departed this life physically, we know that our Father has a place prepared for us. In fact, St. Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 and into chapter 5, he said, Though outwardly we're wasting away, inwardly we're being renewed every day. For even if this earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we know we have a heavenly dwelling, not made with human hands, already prepared for us in the heaven. And then in chapter 5 and verse 7, he says, Therefore we walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, we recognize that if we were to cling to everything we see in this world and be perplexed by the changes and chances of life in this world, it would depress us. But we walk by faith knowing that nothing this world sends us, us can separate us from God, as St. Paul said in Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and following. I am sure. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our sister must have known this passage very well. She must have heard her husband preach on it several times. And so her favorite passage of scripture was 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which speaks about this love of God. This love of God that is never separated from us, no matter what happens in this life. 
And so in verse 7 of that very chapter, she would know love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And she lived this in her life. This was the love she shared with her family. This was the love she extended to those around her. So much so that we could hear the beautiful eulogy of her life this morning. Of how she cared for persons as though they were an integral part of her. And that is really what we are called to do in this life. We are called to care for each other with the time that God has given us. For ultimately, our judgment will be based on how we treat others in this world. That's what Jesus said in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, 31 and following. He said, the, the judgment shall be like this. That the master shall come and he will separate the sheep from the goats. He'll place the sheep at his right hand and the goat at his left. And to those on his right hand he will say, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you cared for me. I was a stranger and you made me feel like a part of you. I was in prison and you came and visited me. And we're told that many persons will say, but Lord, when did we see you like this and did these things for you? And he'll say, and as much as you did it to the least of one of these, my brothers or sisters, you have done it to me. Our sister, Eloise, lived that in her life. Our sister shared her life with others. Our sister had a faith that was so deep that even in the uncertainties of life in this world, she never gave up on the hope that was preserved for her through her relationship with Christ Jesus. And, that, and so today, as painful as it is for us to gather here, and mourn her loss, it is also an opportunity to celebrate her life. To celebrate the beautiful soul that was Eloise Patricia in this world. The beautiful soul that extended the hand of love to so many. The beautiful soul that reached out to so many with compassion. The beautiful soul, the calming presence of which just to be there in her presence could transform your whole life and how you felt at that particular point in time. And we celebrate that. And so I encourage us today, mourn together as a family. That's very important. Cry as much as you need to. For that too is a part of the healing process. For it is only when we have exhausted the entire panoply of human emotions. It is only when we've gone through like the psalmist in Psalm 22 and asked, My God, my God, why? It is only when we've gone through like Job and said, Look, I do not know what God is doing here. I cannot fully comprehend what is going on. That we'll come to that point that Job reached to and he said, I know. I know that my Redeemer lives. I may not understand everything about this life. I may not understand fully what is happening to me at this time. But I believe that God is in the midst of this and He is in control. And once He is in control, all that He does will be well. I encourage you to hold on to that faith as you face the days ahead. Strengthen each other with that faith. And when the pain of the present time subsides, I pray that we can all look back fondly on our sister Eloise's life in thanksgiving to God for even though such a brief period of time, for within the context of this world, she's extremely young, for placing so beautiful a soul in our midst, for granting us the privilege to have been touched by a life like hers. I pray that God will grant you strength in the days ahead. I pray that your faith may be strengthened as you face the future. But I also pray that Almighty God, in His gracious love, by virtue of our sister Eloise's life's work, 
will receive her into that place where death will be no more. Neither will there be pain or sorrow or crying anymore. For the former things would have passed away. May Almighty God grant unto her eternal rest. And let light perpetual shine upon her. And may her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace and on the last day rise to eternal glory. Amen. Amen. Let us now reaffirm our faith in this almighty and ever-living God as we say together the words of the Apostles' Creed, which is the faith of the church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Your response after each petition, Lord, in your mercy, will be hear our prayer. Let us pray. We pray for those who mourn, remembering especially the Moore family. We commemorate the departed, Eloise Patricia. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father, who raised our Lord Jesus from the dead for the salvation of all. Grant, Lord, that your servant may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be close to those who mourn. Increase their faith in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we be strengthened in our faith. Live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your Son, and be ready when you call us to the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Show your mercy to the dying. Strengthen them with hope, and fill them with the peace and joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend all people to your unfailing love that in them your will may be fulfilled. And we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we remember before you this day our sister Eloise Patricia, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Holy Spirit, the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. The Nun of the the Song of Simeon.
Lord will guide into the way of peace. Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name, saying, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. Eloise, Patricia, into paradise may the angels lead you. At your coming may the martyrs receive you and bring you to that holy city, Jerusalem. Amen. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another before the mountains were brought forth or the land and the earth were born from age to age you are God you turn us back to the dust and say go back O child of earth for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past and like a watch in the night you sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning, it is green and flourishes. In the evening, it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid because of your wrathful indignation. Our iniquities you have set before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you're angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of life is 70 years, and perhaps in strength even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly, and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord. How long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning, so shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you have afflicted us, and the years in which we have suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiworks. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man, born of a woman, has but a short time to live. Like a flower he blossoms and then withers, like a shadow he flees and never stays. In the midst of life we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, and at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our sister, Eloise Patricia, and we commit her body to the ground earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved Son shall come again in judgment, both this our sister Eloise Patricia and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come, with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those their love, and this we ask. In the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Rest eternal, grant unto her, O oh Lord. And may her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. And the Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious unto her. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon her and give her peace, now and forevermore. Amen.
What the fuck do you have in Jesus? When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, then time shall be no more.
When peace like a river, I can rest my way.
He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. He shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his pinions and you shall find refuge under his wings. His faithfulness shall be a shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of the arrows that fly by day, of the plague that stalks in the darkness, nor of the sickness that lays waste at midday. A thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come near you. Your eyes have only to behold, to see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, and the Most High your habitation, there shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. You shall trample upon the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I'll rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. There is a land that is fairer than day.
We give you heartfelt thanks for your servant, Eloise Patricia, for having lent her to us on her surgeon here while on earth. She now rests in peace. We pray that you will receive her more and more into your joyful service. We thank you for being the God of all comfort. And now to her family, her husband, and those of the church family, we pray that as they go ahead in the absence of this your servant, that that void will be filled with your divine presence. Enable them, Father, each day to sense your strength. For your word has promised us that the eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. This we pray with thanksgiving. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. Let light perpetual time. May she with all the saints departed rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. And now, to God's gracious mercy and protection, I commit you this day. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.